welcome to um, tonight's uh, mental wellness chat. Um, it is the end of the year, it's December, and I'm doing something really special um, with you guys as a group. We're going to be um, talking a little bit about uh, reflecting back and looking forward. So this is something that I naturally would do on New Year's Eve a little bit with my um, my family or if I had friends over and um, and so it, it will look a little bit like this it won't be catered exactly to chronic disease like today it will but um, I so I just wanted to to let you know that um, that we're going to do something a little bit special a little bit unique but hopefully will help to kind of set off your um, your plans into going into 2024 in a positive light so um, thank you to uh, Viatris for their support um, I the MS mental wellness chat has been um, here. We have been doing this for over three years. And um, so I'm thankful for MS Views and News for their um, bringing this program to the MS community. And then, of course, very thankful for our sponsorship that allows this program to happen. So thank you, Viatris, for your sponsorship of tonight's program. Introductions. Um, sometimes I forget to, um, to fully introduce myself, but I am Jessica Thomas. I am a licensed clinical social worker, and I have been working with people living with chronic disease and chronic progressive disease and, um, and even sometimes terminal disease um, for, um, for a good long while. But I am primarily special and um, specialized in working with people with neurological disease, and MS is one of those specialties that um, I am um, very focused and interested in and part of the reason is is that when i was in graduate school i was um, diagnosed with ms so um that was a long time ago but i um so i have a lot of clinical knowledge um, as well as um, personal experience and when you put that together um, i really care big about people's emotional wellness and their journey as they journey through um, living with ms and um, so tonight's chat is um, a little bit about looking um, back and, um, you know, we're in December and December tends to be kind of a reflective month by the time we get to sort of this point and the rest of the year and um, people tend to reflect on um, the year. So we're going to look back a little bit. We're going to also look forward and spend a lot more time looking forward. And then we're going to talk a little bit about planning for emotional wellness in 2024 and what things, you know, do you need? What tools do you need? So this conversation really is um, is to help you kind of navigate emotional wellness and kind of help you kind of sort through um, the maybe some of the challenges that you've had. Um, you know, I encourage you to take notes because we're um, going to have you participate more. Now, use the chat box. It's going to be interactive. But these are things that I hope that you'll reflect on. And if I there's something that um, hits a note or um, or something that you want to um, continue to reflect on after the program, you know, I, I want you to be able to do that as well. Um, again, I uh, mentioned as we were all signing on, this is something that I um, that I usually do on New Year's Eve at my own house um, where I um, have my family and if I have friends over, we kind of reflect on kind of the year and we also look forward to some other things and then we kind of plan things that, um, that we need tools and resources. Um, this is a little bit more clinical than what I would do with my family, but, um, but these are important things for all of us to do. So um, navigating emotional wellness involves, you know, really both of these things, kind of looking back and looking forward and um, kind of embracing, um, you know, life beyond your MS too um, and, and using the things that you've um, been able to, to be resilient with going forward. We'll move on to our next slide. So reflecting back, we're going to um, we're going to walk through a couple of different um, concepts of reflecting back. And the first one is really um, resilience. Um, so we'll move this slide to um, resilience amidst challenges, because resilience is something that we um, we innately have um, something some attributes of resilience we have to foster. And um, and so it's important to think about the things that we were strong and if you're not feeling strong today if you're feeling kind of chaotic today i want you know to invite you um even before we get kind of deep into discussion to you know to take maybe a couple of you know cleansing breaths and and see if you can if, if it's possible to kind of separate kind of like how you're feeling in the moment to um and or what happened before the stress that you're feeling to kind of like here where you are right now 
And, um, and so um, with, you know, reflecting on um, resilience is, you know, reflecting, reflecting on the things that the strength that you've had, the, um, the resilience that you've shown while navigating the challenges of not only living with MS, but just living because life can be kind of hard. There's um, some, you know, comments uh, or um, some statements and I which I can agree with you know adulting is hard I think life is hard sometimes and so um resilience admits all these things and um and there is no doubt that every single person in this chat either participating or um, even if you're quiet on this chat that you've dealt with some um, some challenges this year and um, and so I want us to take a moment to um, to kind of think about you know what you know what challenges you know did did you have this year and we'll move on to our next slide um, so what uh, what was a challenge for you this year and um, so we'll start with that you know what um for you personally this year what was the challenge that you you dealt with you know i will say and i will get us started um i um i work remote and so sometimes i i can deal with a little bit of loneliness sometimes i don't work in i work remote i love my job i love when i'm traveling and busy but sometimes it can be a little bit lonely so i've been trying to kind of create um stronger um social groups and etc and i've been trying to branch out of that but that was a challenge this year an unexpected challenge actually um so we have erica who had a, um, a seizure for the first time last week erica i'm so sorry that is, that is a very scary experience and and definitely a big challenge um to to have to uh, to deal with um that as well and uh, maddie said i had to bounce back after a relapse a month ago so that's a really that's a big challenge and and um Linda um, said, I have anticipation for um, anticipation for oral surgery and got through it. Therapy helped um, in this chat and another group. I used a lot of visualization as tools. I'm glad that you found some things. And um, and then we had someone that's waiting on SSDI approval and um, received a letter of denial for um, the appeal yesterday after waiting for two years. So that that is a really big challenge because not only is it a challenge to apply for disability, the process of going through disability is a challenge. And um, and then going through the appeal process is a challenge. If any one of you have any tips for this person um, or or um, good thoughts, you know, please um, feel free to share them. Um, I I know um, from many people that I've worked with that this is a, a process that can be very challenging and and it takes time and um, and it's hard. Um, Jeffrey said, my biggest challenge was coming to grips with losing my mobility. It's an incredible challenge to have, Jeffrey. Thank you for sharing. Dion said, a, um, a huge change in my mobility and strength on my left side. Deborah says, I feel alone even when my family here and they don't want to include me and I've asked. And Sherry said, loneliness, living in a rural community with no friends. Paul from California, um, diagnosed in January, it's affected my balance and stability and had to get comfortable with using the walking aid for confidence. So we have actually a lot of people have had some mobility changes. And we have David um, who's had um, 11 falls. Um, James said staying positive um, and um, Rebecca says health challenges, um, health challenges um, over and above MS and extended to um, PT and OT, um, all are worsening mobility. So unresolved relationship issues and trying to use CBT um, tools to cope. Okay, thank you so much, everyone, for sharing your challenges. And um, you know, and and so if and if you, if you can tell that there's a lot of challenges that have themes that there um there are um a lot of mobility issues or people like that dealt with loneliness just like me a little bit. Um, you know that there's um medical issues. Um, you know, et cetera. So. So now that we're reflecting back, what tools helped you to feel resilient during those times? So during some of these challenges, um, and, and you might still be using these tools, you might still be applying them. Um, and I know that Linda had shared um, that um, visualization and it would help. And then we have um, um, Rebecca that shared um, trying to use cognitive behavioral therapy to help cope. Um, what tools have helped you to, to be resilient? Um, so I can tell you one of the tools that um, helped me to be resilient. Um, 
and um, and that was um, for um, for loneliness. One of the um, tools that helped me be resilient is one is just knowing I wasn't alone in that feeling. Um, but then also just talking about it um, has helped me a little bit, um, and um, and it has helped me to sort of strategize and, and find some things and find some ways to expand um, more connections. So we um, we also have. Um, Deborah said um, to the person with SSI and um, the going through social security and um, get a good, good neurologist in your cor um, corner and um, consult with an attorney, even if they take a percentage. I thought MS was fast tracked with uh, now with SSI and it, it is not at this point. Um, Tamara says um, deal challenges we're dealing with falls and, and a loss of her sister. And, and, um, and Scott said for the disability denial for your doctor, write a letter on your behalf. And then David um, said exercise. So we're going to switch to exercise. Um, we're going to switch to resilience. So um, David said exercise has helped him to be resilient. And exercise has hel uh, helps many, many people feel resilient. For me, it was reaching out. I would tell friends, you know, like I, um, you know, connect with people. And that that was something that helped to be resilient. We have cognitive behavioral therapy. We have visualization. Um, probably um, if with the people that have had some changes in their mobility, we had someone um, and that um, had to um, use a, a mobility aid. And that probably helped you to, it probably didn't feel resilient at first, but that probably is helping you to be resilient with, um, with some of the mobility changes as well. So we're gonna move on to our, um, so the idea of the concept here is what helped you to, to be resilient um, and amidst the challenges. So we're not gonna stick with exactly one specific challenge. We're just kind of thinking about the year. So a personal growth. It's important to acknowledge the emotional, the mental, the spiritual growth achieved throughout the year. So um, when we're looking back and we're reflecting, we're thinking about the things that we were resilient for and then also the ways that we have changed, you know. Um, so we're going to move on to our next slide. So how have you grown this year? So um, Maddie is... Um, Sorry, he, um, he said, I'm studying the Overcoming MS program. It's just with diet, exercise, and meditation. Of course, that doesn't take away your MS, but it helps you to, to cope with your MS. Um, but how have you grown this year? Thinking about, like, what things have challenged me but, um, but have also changed me in a good way? And um, and so I will give some examples um, as we're going. So um, you know, for some people, um, you know, that I that I know that they've grown um, because they um, they've entered in a program like Maddie has. Um, some people I know have um, have grown this year by. Um, Really knowing that um, that spending time with people is important, and um, and they've been able to um, to foster those relationships. Some people I know have grown because they realize that they have some level of control in their um, emotions and in their moods and um, and their environment. Um, Tamara says um, swimming, um, also being around one another. Linda said, I'm more at peace. My circle of friends is smaller, got away from um, drama. So kind of um, that, and that's a big area of growth when you can kind of like help to cultivate your environment to, to be um, a little bit more um, peaceful and um, supportive and, and less dramatic. Um, and that really does, um, you know, can be a, a circle of, you know, an area of growth. Now, um, you know, some, you know, some people, you know, have experienced um, health challenges and, and, and that, you know, um, has probably led to some area of growth as well. Um, learning how to navigate um, a new challenge, um, learning how to navigate um, even mobility challenges um, gives you growth. And um, we have um, Deborah that says, I'm trying to stop looking for help outside myself. Get over it is what I hear from family. So other groups are better if I do not mention MS. So, um, so maybe, um, so I, I think maybe that translates to, um, you know, like um, finding the, the right people <laughs> um, and, and also like not, um, not counting on the wrong people um, because get over it's not what you need to hear. And maybe that's the growth is that you've allowed yourself to not 
that's, you know, that's, I don't need to bring my concerns to them because that's not what I need to hear. That's not what support looks like for me. Um, navigating the healthcare system um, makes me grow. <laughs> um, Linda uh, shares, that's so true, right? Um, and that David said it's okay to ask for help and it absolutely is. So we're gonna move on to our next slide because we could keep talking all night about these. So support systems, um, you know, this is when we're reflecting back, um, we wanna think about um, the importance of um, supportive networks, our family, our friends, our healthcare professionals, um, and who has been, and we'll move on to the next slide as well, because um, it will be a question, who stands out as a support champion for you this year? Um, I will um, we'll get us started as we um, get people to, to chime in, but um, I would say my MS specialist has been a, um, a support champion for me because I had to make a treatment change. And, um, and with that, you know, I, um, I never seem to make a treatment change with ease. I always, you know, get really anxious about it. And, um, and so um, that was, um, I think, some, some a relationship that really mattered to me this year. And we have, um, so we have the Maddie who lives in North Carolina, there's an organization called the Disability Advocates and um, they helped him um, when he, he was turned down three times for a disability um, and appeal or appealed three times. And, and so they were uh, definitely a support champion because that it's hard, I'm sure. Um, you know, the person was a confidential who shared that they're going through this process, but but Maddie understands what it's like to go through that process as well as many as other people. Um, we have um, Tamara that says never do a step to um, to see it other than um, MS family, and then. Um, Sherry um, said Crystal and um, she is an MS friend that calls her. And then Erica says, my partner who found me and called the ambulance. I was so glad my children, it was not my children who found me. Um, uh, so we have a lot of really good support partners here. My oldest friend who's 82 with MS um, since she is 22. I come to, um, back every, um, I see her um, come back every, um, from every time to time, sorry, it's hard to see. Um, so that it's important to think about and it doesn't you know it doesn't have to necessarily be a super close relationship because i just mentioned my ms neurologist while I, he's been my specialist for a long time you know he's not my friend you know so um but he was a, a big impact for me this year um and then we have david who says my support group um of the bahamas um david if i ever get to the bahamas i'll let you know i'm i'm always fascinated that we've got someone here from the bahamas We'll move on to our next slide, um, but but again, we get remember reflecting on the people that were supportive to you. Coping strategies, thinking about the coping mechanisms and lessons learned to help uh, navigate the emotional and physical toll of MS, and we're just going to say in life too because life is hard sometimes. So we'll move on to the next slide. What has been a coping strategy that helped you this year? I will get us started. Um, so painting had really helped me this year. Um, I have found that um, when I break away and I paint a little bit, that I um, can alleviate some stress and, and can kind of um, refocus myself. And that can be um, in you know versions of like just doing arts and crafts or sewing even. But um, but it, for me, that's been a coping um, strategy that's been very helpful. Um, we have um, Antoinette, this is artwork. Um, Sherry said glimpsing. If you can um, explain that, Sherry, I, we would love to, um, to know. Um, and Tamara says art class with others. Um, exercise is also good walks. Like I've, when I've been able to take walks with friends, that's been really um, a, a great coping mechanism. We also have, um, remember that we had someone practicing mindfulness and, um, and also cognitive behavioral therapy. So I would imagine that those um, have been helpful. But what is something that you've done that has helped you this year? It might be big, it might be small. Linda says she's gears up and down like a um, 10 speed bike and pace it throughout the day. So uh, that learns that you, you've learned how to kind of pace yourself, it sounds like. 
So thinking about as you reflect, you know, what are things that you have done? What are you doing to cope that kind of helps? Sometimes I just sit on my my back. We have a, a screened in porch and um, and usually the weather's pretty mild in North Carolina, except for the summers. And so I've spent a lot of time on the porch. That's relaxing. And that becomes kind of a coping mechanism, too. And um, David says chair yoga. Um, you guys can keep contributing to the, um, this and um, what coping um, strategies have helped you. If you haven't, if you need help with coping strategies, I, I just want to do a plug that counseling can be very helpful for this. And, um, you know, it also, you know, talking to other people and paying attention, even hearing what other people do sometimes can be inspiring. But if you're struggling with coping, um, you know, counseling could be helpful. Um, I know when I was doing therapy, I'm, I'm a director of patient education for a rare cancer organization right now. But um, when I was doing therapy um, full time, a lot of what I did was helping people find things to cope. And it was personalized to what worked for them. Um, I have Linda that goes to my singing class once a week, walking my dog, looking at nature is so calming. Um, and I know Maddie is on here. He hasn't um, said, but music um, for Maddie. Um, Maddie, you can chime in whenever you, um, you hear, but I know music is good for you too. So we'll move on to our next slide. So gratitude. This is something, if you have been um, on the MS Mental Wellness Chat, you know I believe greatly in gratitude. And, um, and the reason why is I have done a lot of research on gratitude, did a lot of research on resilience with living with disease. And, um, and gratitude was one of those things that came up um, a lot. And so when, um, when we're reflecting back on the last year, you know, we talked about challenges and those are easy to see. But um, but also gratitude is something that we need to reflect back on too. things that we were grateful for. And we'll move on to our next slide. And Maddie did respond. He said, yes, music, drawing, painting and meditation. Thank you so very much. And uh, so I'm going to ask you, and uh, so when you're, well, actually I'll share first, um, when you're, um, when you're grateful for something, what it does, it automatically um, helps to put um, positive, great, your um, brain chemicals that you get um, a little bit of a dopamine or an in endorphins from practicing gratitude. But um, I, sometimes I talk about little gratitudes. And if you remember, um, I have that small jar of pearls that I say that, you know, the little things that are so good, like this morning I was out of almond milk or out of regular milk sorry and um and i needed it for my coffee i was super bummed and then i realized i had almond milk and so i have um i'm able to have coffee um this morning and this evening because i had um, almond milk so that's something small like tiny like not a big deal um that i was grateful for um and then also another small this year um you know could you know has been um really just um being able to um continue to foster this um, this mental wellness chat, or maybe that's a big one. But uh, so I wanted to ask you, what is something small that you're grateful for this year? And what is something big that you're grateful for? I, you know, I am big that it, uh, this year that I made a treatment change and, um, and I'm, you know, I'm, it seems to, I've seemed to be responding well to it. So that's a big one for me, but, um, but maybe a small one can be my, um, my coffee and maybe my art, I don't know. What is something that you are grateful for this year? small things and big things. And I acknowledge that sometimes, you know, you might not have had a big thing. Um, but, um, but often we have lots of little small things. And that's why I wanted to, to create attention to that. And um, we have Linda says the innocence of playing with my two year old granddaughter and and big is driving 40 miles each way. Um, driving has been something that Linda has been working on. So we will applaud that. And I can understand that because I used to have some challenges early on in my diagnosis with driving. Um, Rebecca said um, big is my kids and their uh, my kids and um, spouse and their dogs are all here for um, oh, my kids, their spouses and their dogs are all here for Christmas. I am so glad, um, Rebecca, that they're there. So we're going to move on to our next slide. You can still chime in with resilience. You can always, uh, or gratitude, you can always say um, what you're um, grateful for. I'm, I'll always listen. So looking forward. So we did a little bit of looking backward um, and now we're going to do a little bit of looking forward. But before I continue on, I um, I just wanted to mention here, um, I believe that you guys should see that there's five handouts. Um, there should be a handout. Um, 
can you see the handouts on the uh, bar? And if you can't, then I'll make sure I bring them up. So if you can say yes or no, if you can see, okay. Erica, thank you so very much. So you can see that there's handouts. So I'm gonna call attention to those later. Um, and, um, and so don't worry about looking at them now, but I'm gonna um, make sure that you have access to some of those resources. Um, and what we can do is even um, give you time if you want to, to download any of them as well. Um, we have Maddie that says uh, playing a guitar. Um, it's today is uh, David's birthday, so happy birthday, David! So he is grateful for life. Um, and um, Deborah says, small things. I had cataract surgery, which is a um, successful big things. A cornea transplant improved my optic neuritis condition. My vision's better now um, than it was over, for over thirty years. That is incredible, Deborah. Thank you for sharing. And um, Janine says, I love doing crafts, and I play with my um, miniature um, or my dog miniature schnauzer. So we're going to um, talk about looking forward now, and we'll move on to our next slide. So when we're um, when we're thinking about looking forward, new perspectives. You know, what has um, reshaped our priorities, our perspectives, our um, goals for the future? So we'll move on to our next slide. So what is most important to you going into this next year? What is something that you can control? Um, and what is most important to you? And we um, we have Linda that said um, that was really promising news um, on the new her, um, on the new vision for Deborah. So what is most important to you? What is what is something a, a perspective that you have um, kind of going forward that um, for next year that you're going to um, have with you? Um, for myself, um, I'm going to um, connection and community is is really important to me. And I took that for granted when my son was young and it was so easy to have people to hang out with. And when I worked in an office with coworkers, it kind of felt like built in um, friendship sometimes. And so, um, so what's important to me this year is connecting with people. So I am um, making some really um, good strides and, um, and actions to do that. So Linda says, my health and wellness um, can only get better. Um, Carol said, more times with friends and planning for retirement. So when you're thinking about looking forward, you can think about those challenges and, and things that have, have um, impacted you, but you can also think, okay, well, going forward, what's most important to me? What perspectives am I going to take into um, 2024 um, that I, you know, that I want to? And this can be related to your MS and not related to your MS. Um, Deborah, I am so sorry. So uh, Deborah says, um, I thought this was about MS and depression. And what happened is that um, I, so you know, this um, this has been about um, this topic all along, but I believe that there was an error in, in the marketing for this where, because I see it right now, MS, mental wellness, chat, depression, anxiety, and other common mental um, to health diagnoses. And we did that, I believe, last month. And so um, so I am so sorry. I couldn't control that on my end, um, but I did, I did let Stuart know yesterday. Um, but one thing to note, Deborah, is that we are, we do really talk about depression, um, quite a bit through the mental wellness chat. And actually next month we are talking about the topic is, um, MS strain from depression. And so we're going to talk about some preventative strategies that you can do to help, um, deal with depression, but also to keep you, uh, you know, keep depression at bay as much as you can, or some of your depression, depressive symptoms if, if possible. So Sherry said, I'm making friends. Um, Janine said, I would love to help anybody with um, MS. Um, Maddie says, staying calm and healthy. Um, Dion says, I'm grateful for the book club. I've connected via Zoom. That is really cool. Um, Dion, I would um, love some information on um, how you find a book club through Zoom. That is a really cool thing. Um, Deborah, thank you. Next month, please join us if this is not the, the topic that you thought. I'm so sorry. Um, day, but it would be good to stay on if you wanted to. David um, said consistency. So important. Um, that is important to David going forward. So thinking about the things that are the most important to you going forward. We're going to move on to our next slide. Health and wellness. So as we're looking for, um, if this is a part that is kind of, you know, um, you know, relevant um, to MS is, you know, 
as we're looking forward to the next year and thinking about what, you know, what can help you to maintain your overall health and well-being with MS. And we'll talk about the mental health piece here in a, in a, um, in a couple slides. But um, so we'll move on to our next slide. So as we look forward, what, you know, what are the tools and resources that you need to um, to maintain um, health and wellness? Well, I've realized I need to um, I need to exercise a little bit more consistently. So I'm going to go with David's um, um, term on consistency because I um, have been just a really busy bee, very very busy with work, and and sometimes I find that I um, I. So quite, um, I'm not as consistent as I would like to be. So I've got some plans and so I need some, I might get a personal trainer this year. That's one of the tools that I've been thinking about. So what tools and resources do you need um, for, um, to live well with your MS, you know, and to have, you know, a general wellness, you know, I know um, for many, it, you know, it may be, um, for the person who, um, and I'm so sorry I said person, but I just, it's so far back in the um, chat, but the, um, for the um, person who had had the seizure, probably, um, you know, continued appointments, kind of learning what, you know, what medications, resources might be helpful. Um, Sherry said PT and home modifications. And um, that is an absolutely great resource to think about. Um, there's lots of different um, resources that are available to um, to help you, no matter what your challenges are with your MS. And if you um, notice that there is a barrier that is um, something that's getting in the way of allowing you to be um, to live as healthy and well as, as you can within the capacity, within your control, regardless of MS, um, talk to your doctor about it because they may have some um, some recommendations for. Um, services like physical therapy or occupational therapy um home modifications even speech therapy um you know um which speech therapy is not used a lot um with ms but sometimes it can be helpful even for, to help with cognition or there can be a neuropsych referral etc um you know um Oh, so Erica, thank you so much for jumping in. So Erica said, um, that's me. I have to learn a lot about, um, I've had to learn a lot about seizures this year. It was unexpected and she takes really good care um, of herself and can't seem to figure out her MS, you know, and, and when you throw in something, um, you know, a new thing that happens, you know, it's it's an adjustment. We have to readjust to it. And um, and then there'll be different tools or resources or, or things that we need as we, we go forward. So when you're thinking about planning forward, um, overall um, wellness um, encompasses mental wellness as well and emotional wellness, but thinking about the tools that you need to take care of yourself and you and your MS and even other health challenges as, as you may experience them. We'll move on to our next slide. Emotional wellness. So going forward, looking forward, how can we reduce um, stress or reduce stress responses? How can we get help with coping with challenges? Um, how can we get help with addressing mental health needs? Um, you know, if you're if you're struggling with some um, resource or um, struggling with mental health symptoms, and um, again, next month we'll be talking about depression. Um, we talked a little bit more about anxiety and a little bit of depression, I believe, last month. Um, they all kind of bleed in together when I'm in the moment, um, so I can't remember right now. But we, um, what things do you need to um, address any mental health challenges? You know, and um, we'll move on to our next slide. You know, is it counseling? Is it um, what? You know, is it um, learning meditation? Is it learning? Um, a new um, in new tools, um, et cetera. And um, I wanted to um, also clarify and um, Sherry um, shared what glimpsing is. Um, she said it's like micro meditation. It's intentionally thinking of something good throughout the day just for a moment. So um, that sounds, I, I haven't heard of glimpsing before, but I definitely know about intentionally thinking about something good for the day, um, during the day or something good to help kind of change um, how you're feeling. That's a really, um, I'm gonna um, look it up. That is a really cool strategy. But what resources do you need to foster emotional wellness? Um, and so I'll get us, um, I'll start, you know, started. Um, 
So, or actually Sherry got us started. And um, therapy and getting out more. Um, I know for myself, emotional wellness, um, I've learned that I need to get out of my house a little bit more because I'm in my house a lot um, now that I'm working um, from home and working remote. So um, emotional wellness for me is getting out a little bit um, and, um, and doing some things. Also, um, engaging in the things that help me feel more emotionally well like i feel great when i'm creating and i'm doing art and stuff of course my life can't always do that so but how about for you i know i'm sure about myself because it's always easy to, to deviate but what is something that you need and you don't have to um, necessarily answer this right now but thinking about what do i need you know and i've included some um some tools that we'll be talking about here in a, a second but, you know, what are some things and some things that you can set up um, to help foster emotional wellness? I remember during COVID, and I'm just going to share this. I had a, um, oh, we have Tamara that says listening to audiobooks. That is so great. So I have a, um, I'm afraid to say her name, but it's A-L-E-X-A -E here. And um, I have um, something during COVID that I, I, I set, um, set up in the programs um, and it was start my day. And she would tell me a joke, she would tell me the weather, then she would tell, um, she would play a song. And that was really kind of fostered the, like a really kind of bright spot for the day. And, um, and so, that and planning, um, you know, was helpful, and I and it was helpful for many. Um, Antoinette said therapy would be nice. Um, therapy is an option, even if you don't think therapy is is an option um, for you. If you live in a rural area, or if you live in a um, even in a metro area, it, therapy, therapy should be available, um, and it should be accessible, and it definitely should be affordable. There are different ways to access um, therapy when you have insurance or if you don't have insurance. So please talk with your doctor about that. Um, but there are options for therapy. Um, and that's a really great, um, everybody can use therapy. It would, it's a really great tool. Um, Carol says, retirement stability, consistent exercise, and more help around the house. David said, doing more webinars like this. Thank you so much. Um, Telehealth, um, Linda says telehealth therapy is the best. Um, it, I, it, there's a lot of advantages of, of telehealth and does make it a lot more accessible. So when you're thinking about, you know, what, what, you know, what do I need um, to help support my physical health going into the year? And what do I need to, um, to help support my emotional wellness? And maybe you don't have all the answers, but maybe some of the answers are thinking about, well, I will build some tools and resources for next year and I will find out what um what works for me and what i need so we'll move on to our next slide okay so these are some of the tools that i have so i'm going to go through them a little bit so the the first one is the 2024 intention so i pulled this there is a um a planner company i am really big on planners so i usually always have a planner and um and that keeps me grounded um, for the year um, and usually throughout my day because if I lead with intention and I have a plan I work a little bit differently, but that's my personality. Not everyone is like this so um, But from the day designer, that's a, a planning company not the planner I just showed you but um, they have some really great free printables and um, And so I attach them to um, this webinar and you could um, I believe you could save the PDFs to probably your desktop um, etc but the 24, um, 2024 intentions, I love this. This is a very simple way of kind of some of the stuff I did um, that we talked about. So in 2024, I want more of this and less of this. Very easy way to, to think about, um, you know, what, um, what it is that you need next year. What is it that you need more of and what is it that you need less of? That's a really good way to see what's helping me, what's hurting me, um, or what's, you know, um, helping me, what's causing stress, et cetera. And, um, you know, and the important thing is to the things that you can do that are in your control. You know, we can't control um, some things within our health. We can't control that we have MS. We can't control um, that we um, we have epilepsy um, for um for Erica, you can't control that, but you um, but you can control kind of other aspects in your life. Um, and and Anna, you may um, Erica, sorry, you may not have epilepsy. I didn't mean to say it like that, but can't control that that happened is what I mean. Um, but you can control a lot of things around you. So more of this, less of this, just um, something to consider. So that we'll move on to our next slide. 
And so this is a 2024 bucket list. Um, so I, the reason why I included this is because I think it's important for us to think about um, in, in what are things that you want to do? Um, and we'll just say the the bucket list is not um, in the in a bad intention. It's just uh, the you know the name of it. But what are things this year that you would like to do? And think of small little things. And you can do really big grandiose things too if you want to. But thinking about what are just some small things that you would like to do this year. Um, you know, for example, listening to audiobooks. Um, you know, you may have a um, you know, goal, it, your um, 2024 bucket list um, may carry just, you know, a lot of different things that are very personalized to you, but it's important to know and have things to look forward to. And um, I find that the bucket list, um, I used to do this with my family when my son was a lot younger, but the bucket list was kind of good because it kept me, um, kept me kind of having things and to, to look at and, and ideas. And I'd think, oh yeah, you know, we'd have a summer bucket list and I'd think, oh yeah, it's, you know, um, let's go, it's raining, let's go play in the rain or, um, or let's go make s'mores or, you know, it, 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 get, it life can become very routine and scheduled and, and the bucket list can kind of shake things up a little bit and you can do a lot of free things on a bucket list. So we'll move on to the next slide. Okay. So um, this is a just a PDF, um, and my daily mental health tracker. I talked about this last time, and um, I do remember this in our last mental wellness chat, and I just wanted to include something. Um, I think it's important for us to track, um, and you don't have to track on a daily level, but there was a lot of people that wanted um, information on a daily tracker, and you can recreate this for yourself. Um, if the um, if the print is is not if it's kind of blurry or um, the PDF doesn't work for you, but um, it's essentially kind of just looking at you know um, how are you feeling today, sort of like when I do the mental wellness check, um, you know, and that it allows you to kind of expand on that. It talks about how was your sleep, um, you know, things that you're grateful for, what are your goals for the day, um, were you hydrated? So you could really customize like a mental health tracker for yourself. And I know that for my myself, I would use my planner for that. Like, so I would um, I would know if I had not been sleeping well, or if I was having a lot of increased MS symptoms, or or if my mood wasn't good for more than a couple of days at a time. I would note that in there. But but this is a really good tool, and so I wanted to share that with you as well. But there is also a. Um, actually, let's move on to the next um, slide. I'll see if I included it. Okay. And so um, I'll just talk about the other uh, couple of attachments that we have. So um, the other attachment we have is an ideal week, and it's a printable. And I love this. Again, it's from the Day Designer, which is a planning company. If you go to their um, their website, they will give you, um, you have access to all of these um, free um, printables, which is really cool. But I love the ideal week, and I used to use this in therapy um, with people as, as they were kind of planning out kind of what on, you know, an average week, what it looks like, and and things that um, that they wanted to fit in, if they wanted to be purposeful and, and exercise, you know, um, three times a week, or where would they fit it in? Or um, if they um, wanted to, um, to make sure that they, you know, went to a swimming class where, you know, where does that fall in your week and how can you protect that time? So it's, a, I think it's a really good tool um, to use. And, and I think when we get into the new year, sometimes we want to plan out things. And so that, um, that is a, um, a, a good way to do it because it's all on one sheet instead of like multiple, like a daily one. Um, and then I also included, um, let's see. Oh, okay. Yeah. So there's one that has a couple of things together on it. So um, yeah, so that's, that is actually um, all of them. So you've got the, um, the bucket list, you have the mental health tracker, the ideal week. Um, and then you have the 2024 intentions. So before we um, kind of start um, wrapping this up, because I don't want to, um, to end it early. Um, I'm going to um, look and see. Um, so we have Carol that, um, her daughter bought her tickets to see the tenors for Christmas. It was on her bucket list and she was um, happy and it was so amazing. That is so great, Carol. 
Um, so out of the things that I have shared, um, those resources, do any of those resources look like something that you would utilize? Um, I would love, uh, so one of the things I wanted to work really hard for the in, in this mental wellness chat um, going forward, one of my um, intentions is, is to give you these kind of tools because I know that we talked about it last time and I just want to make sure I'm giving you stuff um, that you can um, really integrate um, into um, and the tool that you can integrate into kind of going forward. So I'm not just talking, I'm, I'm sharing the tool as well. Sherry asked for the name of the planner um, company and it's called the Day Designer, D-A-Y Designer. It um, can be a pretty pricey of a planner, but um, what I do love is that they have tons of printables that you go in and it's free and you can download any of the printables for free. And so um, you have access to all of the great tools and you don't have to buy the planner, even though the planner is, a, is very beautiful and cool. It's, it's kind of great that you can have access to all of those tools. And I did use them in therapy quite a bit because I, I thought it was helpful for when people needed structure. So um, what is something that, um, what is one of your big takeaways from today's program? Something that you're going to take with you when you're thinking about, and then I have a couple of honorable mentions for resources. So as you're thinking, I'm going to talk about the honorable mentions. So one of the um, honorable mentions um, for um, for this um, program, and I didn't um, give you a, um, a sheet or um, information on this, but it's something to think about. And um, again, when I was doing um, therapy full time, I um, often would um, would do this with people, and we would come up with a um, a word of the year or a couple words of the year. Um, and and what those words were is they were just really to help provide guidance um, for the things that they wanted to um, they wanted their life to, you know to ha their year to look like if that makes sense. And so I usually would have people look at a. Um, hundreds of words and kind of highlight the words that they connected with. Um, like if I was looking at a list of words, um, I would probably connect with words like um, that were around connection or um, friendship or relationships, etc. And um, creating an art and, and those sort of things. But um, but you go down a list um, and you um, you you kind of weed out the words that you really are speaking to you that you connect with that you feel something when you see them and um, and usually people would end up with a, a couple of words um, and it usually would be um, you know two or three words that they would choose for the the new year that they would kind of take with them and they would let them be sort of the um, resource that they need to kind of help them guide some of the, the things that they did. And often words, you know, would have peace or, or grace or, um, um, you know, to be present, um, to, you know, calm, you know, words like that too. And so I share that, that it definitely is a longer activity of an exercise. But um, even as a, a therapist going into the new year, I would do um, this with patients because I think it was helpful for you to have kind of a direction. Um, and, and sometimes we can't, um, I'm not big on New Year's resolutions. I think um, sometimes those can be hard. I do like smart goals and planning and I, I love a plan. But um, but I think resolutions can feel kind of hard and um, harsh sometimes. So I love the idea of health. Um, and to me that was helpful or energy and that was helpful to me to motivate to exercise instead of feeling like I had to exercise three times a week for 30 minutes a day. Um, so it helped to lead those behaviors. So I definitely think that that's just something to think about as you're kind of looking forward into the next year. Um, we have Carol who says making um, a list of important tasks to complete and help um, and find help in achieving them. That's a great thing to take forward. And um, and Maddie says looking forward um, and planning. Um, and then David said a bucket list and, and then the tracker as well. So um, so again, I wanted to thank the at, um, Biatris for their um, sponsorship of tonight's program. And one thing, if you know about me, I um, for the person who said they wanted consistency, you will get consistency with me. Um, 
So I always end with this slide, and the reason why is that um, this is um, we are such a community here, and um, and you guys do such a great job of connecting with one another and sharing really great tools and resources, and even um, notes of encouragement. But this is not a goodbye because we'll see you later, um, see you next month, and I wish you well. And as you plan forward, um, plan for an emotionally well 2024, and we'll be here for you.